Hello again, folks. We're still working on the review for One Dimensional Motion, and we're going to go over 14 and 15 here. And on 14, uh, the bus problem, as I like to call it, uh, I kind of wrote out the pertinent details here. Uh, it's 200 meters between stops. It starts from rest, accelerates at 1.5 meters per second per second, up to a speed of 12 meters per second, and then it continues at that speed. Notice they don't tell you a whole lot about that one. Um, and then it decelerates at 2 meters per second uh, to come to a stop. So it feels like you don't have that much information for each of these. Um, first off, how many different motions are there? You got this one, starting from rest and then accelerating up to 12 meters per second. Then continuing at that speed, meaning you're going at a constant velocity here. And then you're going to do another acceleration, but a slowing down um, here to come to a stop. So we've got to treat these as three separate motions. And the question asks you to find the total time. So we need time one, time two, and time three. Uh, for each part of the journey, and then they want us to graph it. All right, so motion number one, we'll call it. And this will be motion number two, and this will be motion number three. Number one, you start from rest and accelerate at 1.5 meters per second up to 12 meters per second. Well, that seems pretty good because I can then go say, oh, my T1 is going to be V equals V naught plus AT. I can throw that away already. So my final velocity divided by the time is going to be 12 meters per second divided by 1.5. Five meters per second per second, you can get T1. Let's go to motion number two, which is at a constant velocity. I don't need a VOVAT for constant velocity because there is no acceleration. My final and my initial are the same. So I can just think of this one as a divot here. And I'm after T2. I do know that I'm at 12 meters per second. But I don't know how far they went with that. I don't know my D2. And without D2, I can't get T2. So right now, we're stuck. That happens a lot in physics, doesn't it? But I know I can do some stuff with part three. I can say, hey, I know what to do here. So even if you get stuck on a part of the problem, you can go on and earn more points filling in stuff you know and saying, okay, I didn't completely solve it, but I got 75% of the way there. Uh, what do we know? What do we know? What do we know? We're after that T3. We're decelerating. Uh, we were at 12 meters per second. That's our initial velocity for the last part of this trip. We went from zero up to 12. We continued at that speed. In fact, just a kind of quick look at the graph here. So we accelerated. And this is velocity time, sorry. Up to 12 meters per second. And then we continued at that speed for some time we don't know. And now we're slowing back down to come to a stop realize that's got to be a negative two meters per second because if I have a positive velocity I'm going to come to a stop I need a negative acceleration there and that gives you enough to again go get the time that's zero. nope I lied that's not zero the final velocity is zero 
that one's zero. So I'm going to move this over. I'll get negative 12 meters per second equals negative 2.0 meters per second per second times time. I can easily divide and I can get six seconds. So I've got my T1. I didn't calculate that. Eight seconds. And I know my T3. If I could only figure out T2, I'd have this whole thing solved. There's one piece of info we haven't used. It's 200 meters between stops. All this motion takes place over 200 meters. You had some D1, some D2, and some D3. And I can use this to figure out that unknown D2. And if I can get D2, I can get T2, and then I'm done. So figure out your D1. You've got enough info here to go get D1. You've got enough info here to get D3. And you could pick any equation. You could do divot here. If you do divot, remember, you've got to do the average velocity. Same thing here. If you do divot here, which is legit, same thing. You've got to use the average velocity. You've got to average those two numbers. Um, or you could use n, or you could use out. Any of those equations that have d in it will get you there. I'll leave that part to you. Once you have d1, d3, and the 200, you can go get d2, because those three are adding up to 200 meters. So just subtract off D1 and D2, whatever those were, from 200, and you'll get an answer for D2. Once you have D2, you can go get T2, because it'll just be that D2 divided by, or V2 is what, 12 meters per second. And then, finally, your total time is T1 plus T2 plus T3. As I recall, T2 doesn't work out to a nice, pretty even number at some decimal. Um, and then when you graph, uh, do it on uh, that grid or uh, somewhere on graph paper to where I can see your scale. And now that you know T2, you can actually make this graph. Well, we knew the first one took eight seconds. And we know that last part was six seconds, but now we also know how long it was going, that V2. We can now make an accurate graph. All right. I think that's all on that one. I want to look at the very last problem on that page, uh, which gets into plate tectonics again. And they're talking about the plate that San Francisco and LA are on. LA is on the Pacific plate, uh, which is moving seven centimeters per year. San Francisco's on the North American plate and it's moving southward at 2.3 centimeters per year. And so, okay, here's LA, here's San Francisco, they're moving this way. Eventually, yeah, they're gonna meet. They're 560 kilometers apart right now. So how much time do we have until LA folks and San Francisco folks are neighbors? What would the baseball teams do? Dodger fans and Giant fans living right next door to each other. It'll be interesting. All right. How far in the future are we talking here? Realize when they tell you those rates, that those are really velocities. It's a distance per unit of time. Distance per time, or d over t, yeah, that's velocity. So they're giving you the velocity, and we're trying to figure out, well, here's my distance, those are apart. So if I know velocities and distances, I can figure out the time. So. Uh, we do have a unit issue here. This is in kilometers. 
So I'm going to two different ways convert this to centimeters. Uh, one is just using prefixes this way. Say, okay, one kilometer is a thousand meters or 10 to the third meters. And then we've got to get it to centimeters because that'll knock this out. It's in meters, but we want centimeters. One meter is a hundred centimeters. And you can then multiply those and get how many centimeters away San Francisco and LA are. The other way to think about this, if you're good at your metric prefixes, is to say, okay, that's 560 times 10 to the negative, or I'm sorry, 10 to the third for kilo. Actually, let me just write this here. That's 10 to the third. I want to go to centimeters. Centimeters is 10 to the negative 2. That's a jump of 5. The beauty of the metric system is those 10 to the uh, exponents, those are just decimal places. So if I've got a jump of 5 here, that means I need to just move the decimal point 5 places to go from 10 to the third to 10 to the negative 2. And I'm going from a big unit of kilometers down to tiny, tiny centimeters. My number is going to get a whole lot bigger. I need to move it five decimal places, making the 560 a bigger number because I'm measuring it in smaller pieces now. So I could say 560 and now move the decimal point one, two, three, four, five more places. So now it's here and figure out my commas there so I can read that number a little easier. 56 million centimeters apart. All right, that's our distance. I'll keep that number handy. We want the time, rearranging divot for time. Please don't get that equation upside down. Don't spell divot wrong. I see it a lot. Uh, the distance, well, that's the 56 million centimeters. For the V here, realize they're moving closer to each other. This one at, uh, I forget which is which here, oh, that's a seven. And this one's at 2.3. Their relative velocities to each other, they're moving closer at seven plus 2.3 centimeters per year. So every year they're getting 9.3 centimeters closer. Nine. Point three, basically adding those two up. I know they're going in different directions, but this is kind of an idea you should be thinking about with velocities as we start thinking about multiple objects. If you have two cars coming at each other, and this one's going 50 and this one's going 40, if you're the driver in here, how fast does that car seem to be coming towards you in your reference frame? you're moving 50, they're coming at you at 40, it's gonna look like that car is going 90 meters per second from your point of view. So these two cities relative to each other are moving together at 9.3 centimeters per year. So that's gonna be our total velocity that they're moving towards each other. And when you do 56 million centimeters divided by 9.3 million centimeters, you get about 6 million years. I think we got time. Um, so in 6 million years, LA and San Francisco will be neighbors. Interesting to think about. Have a good day, folks.